Taylor. Taylor is a first year student at the University of California, San Diego, studying human biology. He's a little overwhelmed by his new college life, but Taylor believes that he can sacrifice a few hours of sleep each night to best accomplish studying, volunteering, socializing, and research. Say hello to Kim. Kim is a third year student, and for her, sleep is a priority. She believes that she functions best with a well-rested mind and body, and prioritizes getting around eight hours of sleep a night, even if it means that she has to finish up some studying in the morning. Do Kim and Taylor's differences in sleep schedule affect their performance and well-being? Before we address this question, let's first define what sleep is and why we do it. Simply put, sleep is complicated. While we still do not fully understand the purpose and effect of sleep, it is hypothesized to serve a role in energy conservation and restorative functions for the brain and body. It is also possible that sleep aids in the storage and formation of long-term memory, toxin removal from the brain, emotional regulation, and more. So, sleep is important, but how much sleep do we need? Let's look at a research study on the effects of sleep deprivation and sleep restriction on cognitive function to find out. 48 healthy adults were divided into four groups. One group was sleep deprived and had to stay awake constantly for 72 hours, a situation called total sleep deprivation. The other three groups were allowed to spend eight hours, six hours, or four hours in bed each night for 14 days. When they were awake, cognitive performance for all participants was assessed every two hours for every day of the study. This means that they were asked to perform simple tasks that determined their levels of alertness and attention, and their ability to process information in working memory. At the end of the 14-day period, researchers found that the participants who slept only four hours a night made significantly more mistakes in performing their assigned tasks than those who slept longer, implying lower levels of alertness and information retention, about equivalent to the level of participants who had gone two full nights without sleep. Increased lapses in attention were evident after only four days of sleep restriction. Participants who slept six hours a night also performed increasingly worse in their assigned tasks as the 14-day period went on. At the end of the two-week study, this group showed impairment that was as bad as participants who had undergone one night of total sleep loss. In summary, this study determined that consistently sleeping less than the recommended seven to nine hours of sleep a night results in a continuous decline in working memory, attention, and alertness. What does this mean for Taylor and Kim? This study found that the effects of sleep restriction are cumulative, meaning that over a couple of days, Taylor will be increasingly less alert and less attentive to stimuli if he keeps sacrificing sleep. Prolonged sleep restriction can result in detrimental effects on attention that are just as bad as, or potentially worse over time than, going a whole night without sleep. Like his classmates, Taylor is cramming classes, extracurricular activities, and social obligations into his schedule. Sometimes it seems like there just isn't enough time in the day to achieve all of his goals and catch the recommended seven to nine hours of sleep. Not only does he sleep for less than the recommended amount per night, but Taylor often pulls all-nighters, going a full 24 hours without sleep in hopes of earning a higher grade. That's some dedication, but will his strategy actually improve his capacity to learn and store information? Unfortunately for Taylor, sleep deprivation is frequently associated with poor academic performance and decreased learning capacity. Several studies have determined that students going without sleep the night before a test perform significantly worse than their well-rested peers, sometimes by two full letter grades. Another study found that, on average, the overall GPA of students who get less than six hours of sleep is about half a GPA point lower than that of students who sleep the recommended amount. This means that Taylor's chronic sleep restriction and occasional all-nighters are actually conspiring to damage his grades. Why does sleep deprivation affect learning? Sleep deprivation can have detrimental effects on our retention of knowledge, such as the storage and formation of long-term memory. When a person learns new information, a region of the brain called the hippocampus is involved in processing that information and sometimes facilitating its long-term storage in a process called consolidation. Research has shown that after a full night's sleep, this consolidation process improves certain types of learned performance during later testing, even without any additional studying. Sleep deprivation, on the other hand, disrupts the ability of the hippocampus to consolidate short-term memory into long-term memory. This means that if Taylor stays up all night studying for a test, not only will he find it harder to study because he is sleepy, but he may also be less likely to retain the information he went over while he was cramming. So in a nutshell, we've outlined that Taylor's sleep habits could decrease his GPA, 
Now, let's take a closer look at what happens in his brain to find out why attention and learning capacity decline in a sleep-deprived state. Just one night of total sleep deprivation reduces blood flow and neural activity in the parts of the brain called the prefrontal cortex and the thalamus. The prefrontal cortex is like the judge of the brain. A normally functioning prefrontal cortex is needed to carry out executive functions, such as working memory and cognitive flexibility, both of which are required to maintain sustained attention and focus. The thalamus is important for activation of the cortex and communication between different cortical regions, kind of like an excitatory relay station. A reduction of blood flow in these regions of the brain, associated with decreased activity of the prefrontal cortex and thalamus, may explain why a sleep-deprived person has difficulty sustaining attention on one task for an extended period of time. Perhaps one of the most important everyday tasks requiring sustained focus and attention is driving. So let's say after a long night of studying, Taylor decides to drive out to the store to grab some snacks to refuel. How will sleep deprivation affect his driving performance? Although many experienced drivers view driving as a passive task that requires little thinking, driving is actually a highly complex, divided attention skill. Lapses in attention from sleep deprivation can result in devastating consequences, such as crashes, injury, and death. This is bad news for our sleep-deprived Taylor. The prefrontal cortex is particularly vulnerable to sleep deprivation and is important for attention and decision-making. So, impairments in the functioning of this region of the brain can severely compromise driving performance, which requires sustained attention on the road. As a result, young drivers comprise one in five fatal crashes in developed countries. Both decreased sleep and ongoing maturation of the prefrontal cortex are factors hypothesized to contribute to accidents in this population. Driving while sleep-deprived has been compared to the impairment in performance that is seen from drinking alcohol. One study showed that in adults, 17 to 19 hours without sleep, just 1 to 3 hours longer than an ideal 16-hour awake period, has a negative effect on cognitive and motor performance that is as great as having a blood alcohol content of 0.05%. Going 24 hours without sleep produces effects equivalent to having a blood alcohol content of 0.1%, which is above the legal level for intoxication in the U.S. and most countries worldwide. That means that if Taylor pulls an all-nighter, his driving could be as dangerous as if he had two to three alcoholic drinks beforehand. So, in order to preserve his own health and watch out for the safety of others, we'd recommend Taylor get some sleep before he gets behind the wheel. We have focused on Taylor's poor sleep habits and how they affect his ability to pay attention and perform tasks such as driving and studying. Now let's see how sleep deprivation affects one's mood and subsequently mental health. Sleep has been shown to affect how accurately a person can assess the emotions and intentions of others. Sleep deprived individuals are more likely to mistake a neutral social interaction for a more negative interaction. For example, if Taylor is severely sleep deprived, during a social interaction he is more likely to believe that people he is interacting with harbor negative feelings toward him. In Taylor's mind, the neutral expressions of his friends or acquaintances are more likely to be wrongly perceived as angry, apathetic, or irritated. This can result in Taylor feeling depressed or anxious after social interaction. Why does this happen? Sleep deprivation can make it more difficult to distinguish between different emotional cues by increasing your perception of negative images. This decrease in discrimination of emotional stimuli after sleep deprivation is linked to increased activity of the amygdala a structure in your brain involved in processing possible threats and in regulating anger, fear, and stress. In addition, the sleep-deprived brain is subject to alterations in the interactions between the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex, resulting in changes in emotional regulation. In addition to affecting perception of emotion in others, sleep deprivation has been shown to deteriorate one's mood, making a person more susceptible to feeling stressed, angry, and sad. Research has shown that the relationship between sleep deprivation and psychiatric disorders is bidirectional, meaning that sleep deprivation affects the onset of psychiatric disorders, and psychiatric disorders affect one's sleep. This vicious cycle is seen in psychiatric illnesses, including depression and anxiety disorder. While we've discussed a whole host of negative effects as a result of Taylor's sleep deprivation, such as lower academic performance, impaired focus and attention, and unhealthy mood tendencies, Taylor still has time to build healthier sleep habits and avoid these consequences. All said and done, it comes down to this. Sleep is important for a normal, productive wakefulness period. So what can Taylor do to be more like Kim and get the sleep he needs? Well, let's walk through a day in Kim's life. 8 a.m. Kim tries to wake up around the same time every day. 1 p.m. 
Even if she is swamped with work, she takes the time to enjoy some sunshine outdoors during the day. Natural sunlight is typically much brighter than the light we maintain inside buildings and helps reinforce her healthy circadian rhythm. She avoids taking naps during the day, but if she absolutely has to, she prefers to do so as early in the day as possible so she can go to sleep at her normal time. 6 p.m. She exercises in some form every day and loves weightlifting and swimming. She uses software on her laptop and phone that shifts the screen colors after dusk, so she won't be exposed to blue light when it's time to be winding down the day. This allows her brain to avoid the type of light exposure that increases arousal. Lastly, Kim makes her bedroom dark, quiet, and cool by using curtains, eye masks, and even earplugs if it is too noisy outside. This pre-sleep ritual allows her to relax and fall asleep around midnight. Inspired by Kim, Taylor is also taking steps towards prioritizing his sleep. He has improved his grades, has developed stronger bonds with his friends, and is benefiting from a more positive mood. If Taylor can do it, you can do it too.